Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, my thoughts on how to evaluate the quality of an investment. And we're going to go back to the um, video that I did on Nokia's stock valuation because one of the comments that I got uh, was actually pretty fair. Um, the comment was, hey, you know, I'm looking at this. It's got a return on equity of like nine and a half percent. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, you know, that, that was the general gist of the comment. Um, and, and then, you know, of course it was like, why are you being so harsh? Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So I was looking at a chart of the return on equity and return on invested capital over time. Uh, with Nokia, they've been very inconsistent over time, which is pretty telling about the quality of the business to me. Um, once I saw that, I was like, eh, what? you know, I, it really caused me to discount the, uh, the, the decent numbers that they posted over the last 12 months. Because, you know, I'm coming in looking at it for the first time, which is what I was doing, right? Um, when I value a stock, it's usually at the very beginning stages and I'm just trying to, you know, determine is this worth spending more time on? Um, or is it going to be too hard to come up with uh, a, a valuation, a, a more concrete, a more, uh, a better, uh, sounder valuation, right? Uh, and, and so I was looking at that and it really, the inconsistency really made me um, step back and say, oh, I don't know about these numbers. Second of all, um, the, the return on invested capital was okay-ish for the trailing 12 months. Uh, but the thing that you got to remember is that uh, a year is just one revolution around the sun, right? <laughs> There's nothing magical about it. It's the movement of celestial bodies. Uh, so, it, it, you know, I, I like to look at the, how the business has performed over a longer period of time uh, to get a sense of how it is. And Nokia was really inconsistent, which led me to say the comments that I did, um, why it was kind of bad. Uh, the second thing is that return on invested capital, return on equity, they sort of tell you a little bit about the quality of management. We'll get into that a little bit later in this video. Um, but the thing that, that I'm seeing here is that, um, the, that I want to talk a little bit about the actual magnitude of these returns. We've already talked about how they were inconsistent. Um, return on investment that I saw there for Nokia for the trail in 12 months, you know, it was like seven and a half percent, which, you know, is just net income divided by um, long-term debt plus owner's equity, right? The more things you add, the lower that return is going to be. To that denominator. The more things you add to the denominator, the lower that return is going to be. That's just the way that that works. Um, looking at that simplified invested capital measure against net income, it, it was okay for twelve for the last twelve months. That was pretty decent. Uh, you could have done uh, a lot worse. You could have done a lot better, frankly. Um, but seven and a half percent on invested capital, that's pretty okay, right? Um, you really wanna compare that against the weighted average cost of capital to determine whether they're creating value or they're destroying value, um, which is something that I didn't talk about. The thing is, is that at seven and a half percent, there's not a lot of wiggle room, right? That tends to be, right around uh, the average, weighted average cost of capital when you're averaging across uh, like the entire universe of stocks, 
right? It tends to be in that six to 8% range. So a seven and a half percent return on invested capital, eh, kind of a meh <laughs> number, nothing to really get excited about. It really, uh, what that would mean is that, you know, there's a good chance that this company is just treading water. Um, then you go to a return on equity and it was only at like nine and a half percent for the trailing 12 months, um, which sounds okay until you realize that the equity number uh, is a, that that's a number that, that management can direct directly uh, influence. Um, and uh, the way that they can influence that is by taking more debt and in an incredibly low interest rate environment, such as we have had for the last 10 years, um, I would sort of expect that you would be able to get a return on equity uh, in the, let's call it double digit range, right? Uh, I tend to look for, for uh, companies that are giving me a return on equity in the range of 15 to 20% personally. Um, that's pretty aggressive in terms of how much debt you're taking, right? Uh, if you're having fairly standard margins and that sort of thing, right? Uh, then you're, you're, you're probably utilizing a lot of leverage to get there. But the thing is, is that um, what you wanna understand is that over a long, long period of time, that if you've got a company that's maintaining, you know, that 15 to 20% range in that range over a very long period of time, over several years, maybe even a decade, maybe even a little bit longer than a decade, right? If you're maintaining uh, the, those high teen numbers in, in uh, your return on equity, it means that a the the debt levels that they're utilizing are are um, are fairly prudent. They can manage them for a, a long period of time, <laughs> and it hasn't caused any problems. Um, so that's thing number one. And again, Nokia wasn't very consistent. Uh, they weren't as high as I would like to see, and they weren't consistent, right? Um, compared to something like a Verizon or a Comcast, you can take whatever your position you want on those two stocks, uh, but they have had very large high teen sort of area of return on equity over very long periods of time. Um, and the reason why that's important is because as a stockholder, as a shareholder owner, um, you are the equity on the balance sheet. That is your position within the company, right? You're not income, you're not cash flow, you're not anything like that. You are the equity position. So what you want to know is how much um, how much is my equity uh, earning me, right? By staying invested in this business. And um, and the thing is, is that if you have high consistent, you know, team in that high, the, a consistent uh, in that team range, what you're going to do is you're going to get uh, you're going to get that that kind of a return over a long period of time, and it can be very prudent for the company to. Uh, to utilize debt in such a way to maintain those high returns for their owners. Um, and over a very long period of time, say 10 years to 20 years, uh, your returns should reflect the returns on equity that the, the, the company is getting. And if they're getting high teens over a long period of time, you're gonna do very, very well as an equity investor, right? As a share owner. So. That's the other thing. So now, we're already uh, 10 minutes into the video. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about management. 
and the ways they can influence things. There are five ways that they can utilize uh, cash within the business. Um, it's the only five ways that they can utilize cash. Uh, and we'll probably do some more videos on that in the future. But uh, the five ways that, that they can utilize cash are one, they can uh, spend the money, essentially investing back into the business. Um, two, they can pay down debt. Very, very easy to understand those two things. You're spending money, you're paying down debt. Everybody does that, right? The third way that you can utilize money is you can buy other businesses, um, which can add income right uh, so that can be a very prudent way to use money uh, the fourth way that you can use money is that you can buy back shares uh, this is a very good idea in a world where uh, where your returns are very high and in a world where um, where the uh, the expected return that management is expecting on the stock at a given price is less than the cost of capital for the company, right? Um, then that makes a lot of sense to just buy that and you'll do better than uh, you'll do better than than your co quote cost of capital. Um, so that's another thing that, that, that you can do is buy back your shares. The last thing that you can do is you can pay that money back to your shareholders in the form of dividends, which, you know, who doesn't like to get cash, <laughs> right? Um, uh, that, that, that's pretty much it that your management team on these companies that you can own can do. And it, really that those five things wrapped up together encompass the company's uh, capital allocation strategy. And, um, the thing that's going to uh, the thing that's going to give you generate you returns over a long periods of time is how the CEO and how the CFO and you know all those C level executives they get together and they decide how they are going to actually allocate the capital of the business on behalf of the owners, um, and that is going to be reflected in return on invested capital and it's going to be reflected on uh, in um, the returns on equity and those are the the only two things that that really matter for for the business right in, in terms of uh, in terms of capital allocation uh, the, those numbers tell those two numbers together tell you a story of how well uh, the business is allocating capital, right? Um, and then on top of that, you probably want to look at the the cost of capital as well to, to understand whether or not somebody is making a good decision. And you can look at the, the cost of the, the funds, right, the, that are coming uh, into the business and how they're being utilized and what kind of return that you're getting on it. For example, I've got a company they issued preferred shares. Uh, those preferred shares um, came at an 8%, right? They're going to pay an 8% dividend on those preferred shares, which that's the cost of those shares, right? And what the business did is the stock price took a huge, huge tumble. Um, and this company took the 8% that they were paying and they said, hey, the stock price took this big tumble in the recent market downturn. The CEO said, you know, I think that, that in the long run, uh, the business is going to generate a return of 15% uh, on our money. We got this these funds at 8%. We can get something at 15%. Uh, Essentially, you know, he did some sort of valuation, uh, a return on uh, an internal rate of return for the given stock price. He said, we can get 15%. We've got these funds at 8%. We're going to take the 8% preferred shares and we're going to buy back the 15% the that 
on these uh, on these common shares, right? Uh, which I thought was a very prudent and very wise use of those funds. Uh, essentially, they are doubling the uh, they were doubling on the cost of that capital, and I thought that was great. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, it's a great way to 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 do that. So, anyway, that's sort of my thoughts on um, on capital allocation and uh, why I was looking at at Nokia and saying. Uh, <laughs> doesn't look so great, right? It doesn't look like the the management team has been very good at, um, at least from a surface level perspective, which is what I was doing. Uh, it didn't look like they were very good at allocating capital uh, over long periods of time. And that may have changed. Uh, I don't know a lot, right? They could have brought in a new CEO, and that's why we're seeing improvements in the business, all that sort of stuff. Who knows, right? I, I, I don't, frankly, and I admit that. And there could be a, a deeper story. The thing is, is that at today's stock prices, I was looking at it, and the company is just not worth what I'm willing to pay for it, or I'm. The company isn't worth to me what what the the market is willing to pay at the moment, and so I'm like, eh, not worth the uh, the effort, right? And that's the thing that you want to look at when you're when you're just scanning through stocks is is this worth the effort of digging into deeper? Because if it had been uh, the case with Nokia that it was worth digging in deeper, and then I go, oh, they've got a new CEO, he's got this new capital allocation plan, blah 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 blah, and all of a sudden. You know, it may have started looking even more attractive, right? Uh, but given what I was seeing, nah, nah. It's, quote, too hard <laughs> at this price to justify uh, digging deeper into the company, into its financials, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Uh, have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later. Peace out. Bye.